we exalt your name on behalf of your people. For our Lord, tonight we have come together to honor you, to bless your holy name, to adore you. So thank you in the midst of your church, because you send in the world, if your people that call by your name shall humble themselves and pray, you will hear from heaven. You will answer their prayer and grant their request. Lord, we are indeed your people. We are called by your name. Tonight we have come to you to humble ourselves in prayer. Not only on our behalf, but on behalf of the entire church. To honor you in the assembly of the saints. To glorify you before the kings of the earth. To honor you tonight, not in power, not in glory, but to present ourselves unto God in holiness and exalt Him and to cry unto the Lord our God and to say, Father, let Him that call, spare thy people, for thy people are called by the name. Before we go into prayer, I want to just brief introduction. Today is the last Sunday of the month. It's time we usually come together in prayer, not only for the mission, but on behalf of all Christians, especially those who are serving in the field. So when we come together in prayer, we use the opportunity to save the lost, to pray for those who are sick, we pray for those who are in prison, we pray for those who the enemy has put in captivity, and we also use the opportunity to take the prayer request of those who submitted it to us. Tonight we have come before God not for our self-gratification, but to exalt the God of heaven for all he has done, for his goodness and for his wonderful works. Today, before we start, we will be taking a look at the Bible in the book of Daniel chapter 9 from verse 2. It said, the first years of Darius, the first years of his reign, I, Daniel, understood from the scriptures, according to the word of God, of the Lord, given to Jeremiah the prophet, that the dissolution of Jerusalem should last, would last 70 years. Daniel was studying his Bible. And I believe he was reading the book of Jeremiah. And he understood by books that the number of years for the dissolution of Jerusalem was 70 years. Now they were almost at the 68 years, about the 70 years. Daniel did not sit down and say, wow, thank God, praise the Lord, the time is almost over. When he understood by book, he sought his face towards God to seek the Lord, to call upon the name of the Lord, that the Lord might have mercy and fulfill his promise, as he has promised the children of Israel, that Jerusalem will be restored back to its place in 70 years. Today, what does that say to us as believers? Are we supposed to celebrate Christ's return is very close. I will let you into a mystery. Long time ago, the Lord showed me that he would return shortly and that when he returned to take the seed, that this time, according to the vision he showed me, the time is closed. Am I supposed to celebrate and rejoice with the sense that the Lord will come and the iniquity of the world will soon come to an end? No. But this is the time to praise the Lord's prayer. 
The Lord Jesus says, when you pray, you should pray in this format. Say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Tonight, what we are interested in is that word, thy kingdom come. Because if God's kingdom come, a lot of things will change in the world. Sin will be no more. Affliction will be rolled away. Pains will be over. Sickness and disease will have no place. If God rule, the Bible says when the righteous rule, the people rejoice. That is one of the good reasons. Instead of complaining of bad leaders, instead of fighting over the corruption that is in the air through lust, it is for time for believers to pray for God's kingdoms to come. That is the reason why our first prayer request tonight is God, let your kingdom come. Father, in the name of Jesus, we call upon you and we ask for your grace. We ask for your merit upon your people. And we say, this, let your kingdom come today. Let your will be done in our life as it is being done in heaven. Because if your kingdom come, we will have no sorrow. We will have no pain. We will have no affliction. And the reign of your glory in the land will come to an end. That's why tonight we lift up our voice in supplication and we say, Father, let your kingdom come. Let your kingdom come today. And let your will be done in our life as it is being done in heaven. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Our second prayer as we draw from the book of Daniel is that he understood the time. When we believers understand the time, it will suck the face of the Lord. The question today is, do you understand the time? Because when you understand the time, you will call upon God as Daniel did. Daniel did not say the time is close. It's time for me to revisit my enemy with pains. For the number of years it has cost me so, I will give them double for their double. No. That was not his motivation. But he did something contrary to what the people expected from him. It was a time to seek the face of the Lord. It was a time to understand God's divine providence. It was a time to give glory to the Lord who made the heaven and the earth. The God whose dwelling was not with man. The God who has power, dominion, might, wisdom forever. Daniel understood something many Christians today may never ever dream of understanding. Daniel did something extraordinary. He went into prayer. Not only prayer, but he fasted. He supplicated on behalf of his people. He was not praying for himself. Daniel was one of the few men which no sin was recorded of because he had the covenant of righteousness with the Lord. And he kept to it. And because he kept to the covenant of righteousness with the Lord, we could say he has no sin to confess of. He was not confessing, he was not part of the iniquity that drove the people out. He did not say, the Lord is coming for you guys, it's not for me. So, deal with it. No, that was not Daniel. Daniel did something many believers today do not do. I'm going to hell. If you like, you, you can go to hellfire. It's none of my business. That was not Daniel. But Daniel did something. And what did he do? He sought God with prayer. He sought God with supplication. 
He sought God with humility. And while he was busy seeking the face of the Lord, the Lord was also busy adding him to his plan. Today, if you join us to seek the face of the Lord, the Lord will add you to his plan. You don't necessarily need to come on air. You can do the prayers in your home. You can do it alone. You can take it through the land. It depends on the condition you are living in. You can take it for 30 minutes. You can take it throughout the period we will spend on air. If you live in a more comfortable environment, you can do the whole night and supplicate with prayer for the saints. There are a lot of people out there in the world. They are being torn to pieces. The laws of the land is harsh on them. They don't have the boldness to speak the word of God. They don't have the comfort you and I have to open our mouth wide and declare the counsel of the Lord. Whenever they mention the name of the Lord, they have to look at their back if somebody is coming. Because they don't know whether the next night might be their last. Some wake up in the morning and saw their property burnt. Saw their family being persecuted, brought before the village elder, pulled before strange forces for the gospel of the kingdom. And remember, the Bible says, a time will come that any man that killeth us will say to himself, he does God a reward. And he's doing God will. It is his own God will to kill you and to sacrifice you before the synagogue. Today, Nigeria has been one of the countries that where Christian is most persecuted around the world. Do you know why? Well, you don't hear it in the news. Because Jesus said something that was unique to his disciple. He said, if my kingdom were of this world, my fellow would fight and would have prevented me from being handed over to the Gentile. But because my kingdom is not for here, my follower will not fight. So our kingdom is not of this world. We do not fight or indulge in combat. We are not among those buying ammunition to defend the Christians for those who want to harm them. No. Because our kingdom is not from here. Our home is on the other side. We are strangers here. And because we are strangers, we arm ourselves as brethren who will soon be taken up home. And because the Lord will take us home any moment from now, we do not fight. Even though when we are counted as sheep for the slaughter, the Lord did not promise us anything less. He make it clear to us when we have been sent that he sent us as sheep in the midst of wolves. But we should be of good cheer because he has overcome the world. Brethren, can't it all joy when you fall into diverse trials and temptation? Do you know the reason? Because the trial of your faith produces patience. Let patience have its complete work in you. It will make you perfect, unmovable. Do not at any point deny the Lord and be afraid. Don't give up. It doesn't matter the trials of the wicked. It doesn't do not look at their faces. Do not be threatened at the sight of them. They roar like a lion. But they are not the lion. We know who the real lion is. He is the lion of the tribe of Judah, the conquering roots of Israel. He is the I am that I am, <clears throat> the omnipotent and the messiah's God. It is him that cometh from Edom with a dye garment from Bozrah. It is he that speaks in righteousness. 
that is mighty to save. It is he that treaded the wine press of the earth, and it is him that treaded alone in the fury of his anger and in the wrath of his mighty God. The apparel was things and he stained all his white garments. He is the I am that I am. His name is Jehovah. He appeared unto Abraham in the name God Almighty, unto Isaac in the name God Almighty, but in his name Jehovah are they not known unto him. He is the one that said to you, Fear not, I will be with thee. I will not fail you, nor forsake you. When you shall call upon me in trouble, I will answer. He said, call upon me in the days of trouble, and I will deliver thee. I will be a God unto you, and you will be my sons and servants. So today, we're going to do exactly what that we did. Because we know right now, all the event around us shows us the Lord marching in heaven is almost finished. And the Lord will soon return for the saints that are without scores or wrinkles or any such thing. That the Lord himself will return with a shout of an archangel. And the trump of God shall sound. And that is the reason why we need to coordinate ourselves in prayer tonight. And to exalt the king, the immortal, the invisible. The one and the only wise God. And this prayer is going to follow the same format that Daniel used. First, we are going to pray to the Lord and confess our sin to the Lord, the great and awesome God. That is the first thing. We know one of the reasons for the earth disasters and afflictions is because of our sin. In the book of Genesis 1, God said he makes evil verse 6. He said he makes everything that God made was good and behold, they were very good. When that which is good become evil, it is not because good things have become evil to us. It is because of sin. Because when Satan falls into the world, the world becomes desolate. So when sin meets that which is righteous, that which is righteous becomes desolate. And affliction and pain came from sin. Death is as a result of sin. Sickness is as a result of sin. Where does sickness come from? Not from God. From Satan. Where does death come from? Not from God, but from Satan. He is the one that is in charge of taking away life and doing all evil. Where does lust in business, loss of opportunity, loss of job, loss of resources come from? <clears throat> I can tell you the truth, it's not from God either. Is from the devil because he is the thief. And the Bible says, The thief cometh not, but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But I tell you, there is a good news tonight because the Lord is coming into your house, is coming into your marriage, is coming into your church to bring life to those things that the thief has stolen. And to give life to it. And this life is very abundant. God is giving life. I can see the light of God in abundance, in your life, in your marriages, in your business, in your finance. There is life that God is given to his one, chosen ones. And this life, God promises in abundance. And this life is what you have to get tonight. The Lord has promised us life. 
Because he promised us, though the job of a thief is known by him, but he has come to give us life. In place of the things, the thief has come to steal. The Lord did not say, I'm coming to replace what the thief stole. That was not part of his plan. But he's going to put life in what the thief has taken away. Tonight, we're going to confess our sin. Because the Bible says, the soul that sinners shall die. Because sins is the only reason why the evil one has power. The devil does not have power. Nor is he a mighty warrior that can take over your blessing. The only power he has is sin. Because sin brings fear. And fear removes confidence. And when confidence is gone in your life, the enemy reigns supreme. And that is the reason why today you are afraid. Some of us are even afraid to sleep in the house. I can see you right now. Night is coming again. You are afraid of being beaten tonight. You are afraid that your enemy will use you as a band tonight. And I tell you, it is sin that is the cause. Because the righteous is as bold as a lion, but the wicked flee why no man pursue him. If you confess your sin tonight to the Lord Jesus, God is faithful, and He we abundantly pardon. Let us pray this short prayer. Lord, we have sinned. I have done this evil in your sight. We know you are justified in condemning us. We know you are blameless in that judgment. You have not sinned, but we have sinned. We have done that which is evil in your sight. As a result of our sin, we have been afflicted. And pain has covered our life. Lord, we come to you. We know by the deed of the Lord shall no flesh be justified, not before God. That's why we come to you, because we cannot make ourselves righteous. We rely on the blood of Jesus, because as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so shall the Son of Man be lifted up. Whoever look upon him will not be ashamed. We know as we look upon you tonight, Lord, we will not be put to shame. Our sins shall be taken away. Because we look upon the cross, we know he was made a sin for us, he who has no sin, so that we can become the righteousness of God. Now, Lord Jesus, Take my sin, take my guilt, nail it to your cross, and make me a new creature. Let all things pass away from my life. Give me the newness of life. Let henceforth everything in my life become new. Let not my sins be a hindrance to me anymore. Return me back to the guiding of your protection, the guiding of your favor, the guiding of your blessing, that I may be a new creature, that all things in my life should be completely gone and forgotten. Let no more fear reign supreme in my life, because I am no longer of the world. I denounce the world and all its gain, and all its thinking, and all its benefits, and I hold on to Christ, for He is my life. Now I denounce self and faithfulness. I hold on to God, who is able to make me holy, unto salvation. And to present me spotless before the throne at his coming. This we ask.
through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If you have just joined me in this short prayer, the Lord has prepared you. Now you can join us to pray for the rest of the saints as we continue. Because we are just about to start. And now that we have prayed for ourselves, it is time to pray for others. Because that was what Daniel did. Daniel in sackcloth and ashes, fasting with sackcloth, confessed and said, Lord, the great and awesome God, who keepeth his covenant of love with those who love him and keep his commandments. With those who loved him and keep his commandments. God is absent with those who love him and keep his commandments. Because the Bible says to us, let the saints sing rejoicing in glory. Let the saints sing rejoicing in glory. Let us sing aloud upon their beds. We took a sword, which is the word of God, in their hands to bind the kings of the earth with the word of God. And their rulers were fatters of iron to execute upon the earth the judgment that God has written. This honor every saint has. If you have prayed this prayer from the heart with me, that means you have been counted worthy to partake in the inheritance of the saints. And you have this honor. To bind the kings of the earth with chains and their rulers with fatters of iron. To execute upon them judgment that was written before the foundation of the world. And as a saint, you have this honor. And now, what if the saints have this honor? In their life, it's never reflected. They are full of fear. The enemy chased them from the office. They hide their face in shame. Their enemy told them to stop preaching the gospel here like they did to Jeremiah. You see this place? Don't preach here. You can go to that place and preach. Because this place is the king's court. But the Lord says, these people are full of fear. And they run away because they are afraid of persecution. But if you know your right in Christ Jesus, the Bible said the righteous is as bold as a lion. They are as bold as a lion. And you will demand your rights. Do you know why? The earth is the Lord. And the fullness thereof. The world and all that live therein, he funded it for his own. And for his purpose. For his glory. The Lord has created you as an object of his glory. Why will you be afraid of man? What can man do unto you? And who is man that dies? That he should speak a thing in your life and it should come to pass. Who is the witches that they should decree things in their coven and it should come to pass? Who is the demon and the occult that they should gather against you and you are afraid. The Bible says you shall lie down and none can make you afraid. And I'm bold enough to tell you tonight that you will lie down no man on earth, no demon, no power, no principalities will make you afraid. Because Christians panic and fear because they do not know their rights. Because if you know who you are, you fear no one. Because the reason why you fear is because you know those who are against you. But if you know the one that stands for you tonight, you fear no one. And that one that stands for you, he is able. He is before whom the heaven and the earth flew away, and they will form no place for them anymore. He is the one that is on your side. You will not fear. Never give up and be afraid. 
because he is able, more than able to deliver and to save those who trust in him. And tonight, we're going to strengthen those who are currently in the field of the Lord. And we're also going to pray for the lost in the world. Those who are saying tonight in their hearts, I am weary of my labor, O Lord. I am weary. Lord, I am weary because of my ignorance. I am weary because of my sin. I am weary because of my affliction. I am weary because of the labors I do night and day. Day and night I walk for the devil, but yet he is not satisfied. Because he is known to beat his prisoners with continuous strokes. And to render strokes to those who worship him. Instead of giving them praise, he gives them torments. You go to 150 missions, the day you fail one, that is the day you die. Because he's an enemy. Any woman, any man or child born of a woman is an enemy of the devil. He doesn't have friends. There is no matter how serious you are, friends, the devil never sees you as a friend. Rather, he sees you as his enemy. And that's why he do everything to frustrate you, to destroy the work of your hands. Remember what he said. God said in the beginning in Genesis chapter 3 that I will put an enmity between you and the woman, between your seed and his seed. The seed of the devil are your enemy. The devil himself is your enemy. When people are possessed, don't make mistake to think that because they are possessed, they are friend of the devil. They are not. They are still his enemy. Anybody born of a woman cannot be the friend of the devil. Neither can he be the friend of the seed of the serpent. They use them as their objects. And when they refuse to be used, they are discarded. That is whom they are to him. That's why tonight we are going to confess our sin and ask God to rescue such people from the captivity. Because the Lord Jesus said to us in the book of Isaiah, He said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon us. Do you know why? He has anointed us to proclaim good tidings to the meek. To proclaim liberty to the captive. We are going to bring liberty to those who are held in bondage tonight. Lord, I pray for those children of yours who are currently in captivity through no fault of their own. Lord God of hosts, you are full of mercy and compassion. You will not cheat. You will not punish us as we deserve. Some are in clubhouse performing halotry. Some are in the coven looking for blood to drink. And some are in your cortic realm being manipulated for evil. Some are in the demonic realm looking to how to afflict injury. But all these they do in ignorance because the devil deceived them before uses them to deceive others. Lord, I pray on their behalf. And I ask, O oh Lord, for your grace in their life. I ask for your saving grace to be upon them. And your mercies that never comes to an end. Your faithfulness that lasts through a lifetime. O oh Lord, restore your people. O oh Lord, have mercy upon their sins. Look not upon their wickedness. For the name's sake, O Lord, restore them to thy glory. Restore them back to your faith. Because you said to me, if your people that are called by your name, if they shall humble themselves and pray, that you, the Lord God of hosts, will hear from heaven. You will answer their prayer and grant their request. Lord, these are thy people. They are not just called, they are called by your name. 
It is true they may not have humbled themselves. It is true they are lawful captive to the devil. But your word said to me, even the prey of the terrible will be taken away tonight. Because even the lawful captive will be delivered. Because the Lord will contend on their behalf tonight. Lord, there are so many right now because of immorality of the flesh. They have spiritual husband and they have been dug in some spiritual marriages. Based of no fault of their own, they have been head captive, bonds in affliction, and be tormented night and day. I stand in the way of your presence and I decree healing. I decree freedom for them right now. Because the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. And he has anointed me to proclaim liberty to the captive. O oh, you captive sons and daughters of Zion. I set you loose from your captivity. In the name of God the Father. I set you loose from your captivity. In the name of God the Son. I set you loose from your captivity. In the name of God the Holy Spirit. Lift up your head, O gates. Lift them up, you everlasting doors. For the King of Glory is coming in tonight. Who is this King of Glory? The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your head, O gates. Lift them up, you everlasting door. For the King of Glory is coming in tonight. Who is this King of Glory? The Lord God of hosts is his name. He is coming to set his captive free and to raise up the dead. The Lord is coming into your life tonight. If you can just open your hearts and welcome him in, he will not force himself. He has been at the door knocking all through your life. Even tonight he is still knocking. If any man dare hearken unto his voice, and open the door, he will come into him. And I tell you, he will suck with you, and you with him forever. He is at the door. Tonight, knocking in the doors of your heart. Knocking in your life. Knocking in your marriages. Knocking in your office. Knocking in your government house. Knocking in the Senate house. Knocking in your chamber. And he said to you right now, if you will hearken unto my voice, I will come into you, and I will stop with you, and you with me forever, and you with me forever, and you with me forever. Behold, I am here at the door, I am knocking right now, and I will deliver you from the rot of the seed of the Sabbath. I will deliver you from the rot of the seed of the serpent. I will deliver you from the rot of the seed of the serpent, says the Lord. The Lord is calling. He said, come unto me, all you who have labored in sin. All you who has labored and heavily laden. You are tired of your labor. The Lord is calling you right now to himself. And he said, there is rest for God's people. There is rest for those who are calm down. There is rest for the oppressed. There is rest for the afflicted. There is rest for broken marriages. There is rest for those who are in bondage of fear. There is rest for those who are cast down. There is rest for those who are in the torment of bondage. Who the enemy has put in bondage even at their own request. There is rest for you. Come to the Lord. Come to the Lord. Are you tired of labor? Are you tired of your weakness? Are you tired of your wickedness? Are you tired of your sin? You have been moving day and night, seeking for help where there is no help. The Lord says, I should tell you, tonight, come to me. Come to me. You that have labor and are tired of labor, I will give you rest. There is rest for God, people. There is rest for those who are pushed down. There is rest for the oppressed. There is rest for those who the locusts has eaten all their crop. There is rest. 
Come to the Lord and receive that rest tonight. And receive that rest tonight. And receive that rest tonight. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Brethren, now we have completed that second phase. Now it's time to pray for those who the Lord has sent to do his work. There are a lot of missionaries out there preaching the Gospels, snatching the people from the fire. They are sheep in the midst of wolves. Every day they face violent threats to their life. Their enemy afflicts them. And those that hate them make a spot of their life. And the Lord says tonight, not anymore. Not anymore will my servant be rebuked and hurl at. Not anymore will those that call upon my name be afflicted in the earth. Not anymore will they finish my word and go to bed empty stomach. Not anymore, says the Lord. Not anymore. As I live, says the Lord, before me every knee shall bow. And every tongue will confess. As I live, says the Lord, before me every knee shall bow. And every tongue will confess. I am the one that lift up one and put down the other. I am the one that rule the kingdom of men and give it to whomsoever I will, says the Lord, says the Lord. Not anymore, not anymore will the wicked eat the blood of the righteous. Not anymore will the ungodly rejoice over the labor of your hands. Not anymore will the locusts feed off your grain. Thus says the Lord, not anymore. Not anymore will the affliction of the wicked come to pass in your life. Not anymore will the devil has his says in your life, has his says in your marriage. Not anymore will divorce speaks on your behalf. Not anymore will the enemy rejoice over you. Not anymore will the ungodly make him taunt over your life. Not anymore. With the wicked celebrate while you go to bed hungry. Not anymore. Not anymore. With the devil take your children and your wife for your prey. Not anymore, says the Lord. The Lord said, I kept quiet and you were afflicted. But henceforth, in my in mighty deliverance, will I deliver you? Will I set you free from all the captive of the evil one? From all the desire of the wicked, not anymore, says the Lord, not anymore. The Lord your God will fight for you tonight, and you will hold your peace. The Lord will fight on your behalf, and you will hold your peace. The Lord said that we arise like a man rosy from a strong wine, and I will defend you, says the Lord, and I will defend the place of my glory. And I will defend my honor. The Lord Jesus says, I send you as sheep in the midst of wolf. But be of good cheer. Do you know why? I have overcome the world. And I have overcome the world. This is the victory that I have overcome the world. Even your faith in me. Hmm. Tonight, the Lord is in the midst of his church. The Lord will fight for those that trust in his name. The Lord will fight for those that put their confidence in Him. The Bible says that the fervent and the prayer, effective prayers of the righteous avail as much. Avail as much. The Lord will speak on your behalf tonight. The Lord will plead your cause. The Lord will stand in awareness of His wisdom. The Lord said He will no more give your grain to be meat to your enemy. You will know more from henceforth plants an enemy with roots and they will eat it. But the Bible says, He that plant the seed will eat of it. He that sow will reap what he sows. Father Lord, you said, It is he that gathered that will from henceforth eat of it. Father Lord, but he that break the edge, the serpent will bite. 
He that quailed the stone will be endangered by it. He that dug a pit for you will fall into it. The Lord has spoken it, and the mouth of the Lord has confirmed it. It will come to pass. The Lord said that the word that proceeds from his mouth will not return to him empty tonight. He must accomplish the purpose for which I sent it. And he must bring forth the fruit of reward. The Lord said his word and his covenant will not be broken in your life. Has he spoken? Will he not do it? Has he promised? Will he not make it good? God is not a man that he should lie. God is not the son of man that he should repent. He has not seen his fortune in you. He has not beheld the iniquity in your hands. Because you have obeyed him, he says, there is no one that left his father, mother, brother, sister, children, for the sake of my gospel, that will ever be unrewarded. He said, in this world, he will have double. And in the world to come, I will give him eternal life. There is eternal life for God's people. There is reward for God's people. The blessing of the latter house will be greater than the former tonight. The Lord himself has promised you that he will not fail you. That his covenant will not be broken in your life. That the Lord will not utter the word that proceeds from his mouth. The Lord has spoken once and twice have I heard. All power belongs to God. Powers in the sea, power in the land, power in the oceans, they belong to God. They belong to God. The Lord is about to do wonderful things in your life. For you who is listening to the sound of my voice tonight, the Lord says that you will henceforth no longer reap in tears. That your souls in joy, you will reap in joy. You sow in blessing, you will reap in blessing. You sow for victory, you will reap in victory. The Lord has promised that the devil will no more eat the grain that comes from your feet. That your godly will no more celebrate victory over your life. That the joy that is meant for you will no more God be given to the caterpillar. That I, the Lord, will restore to you the year the enemy has taken from your life. That I will restore the year the locust has eaten, the year the palmer has eaten. From this moment, there is a blessing that is released from you. The Lord said He will give you the early rain and the latter rain in the first month. And you said your fruit will yield their increase, that your fat will overflow with wine, <laughs> and your banner house shall overflow with wheat. Thus says the Lord, that these blessings are permanent. That as he was in the days of old, his word will not fall to the ground. Neither his cancer fail in your life. The Lord has these days made you a brass wall, a defense city. The enemy will fight against you. They will war against you, but they will never overcome you. They will never overcome you. Thus says the Lord, for in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Brethren, we are still going to pray. We are going to pray because if you read Daniel 9 from verse 4, he said, I pray to the Lord God and I confess, Good Lord, the great and awesome God, who keep his covenant and love with those who love him and keep his covenants. Lord, we have sinned and have done wrong. We have been wicked and have rebelled. And we have turned away from your commandment and your laws. Why is turning away from the commandment and the laws of God very dangerous for a believer? I will tell you the reason why. The law says, to the children of Israel in the book of Exodus that if you will hearken diligently unto the Lord thy God and to do all that he has commanded thee this day open your mouth wide and I will fill it and the Lord says I will bless thee 
and I will bless your going out and I will bless your commandment, your coming in. But if you disobey, the Lord said you will be cursed when you go out and you will be cursed when you return. That is the reason why the ungodly are under a curse. That is the reason why some Christian wonder, simple, the Lord says if any man come to Christ and say, you creatures, all things has passed away. Why did I still find myself living on that course? The reason is not because God causes his people. The reason is because sin brings cause. Whoever commits sin is a slave to sin. And a slave does not have rights in the house of God. But the son does. Therefore, if the son of man shall set you free, you should be free indeed. But a slave cannot set you free. Because if a slave say, I give you freedom, you are still in bondage because you receive the right of a slave. And that is the reason why tonight you need not to come under the slavery of sin. You need to boldly confess your sins to the Lord Jesus so that your iniquity can be pardoned, so that your guilt can be blotted out. So that you can have the right of sonship. And also notice that the Bible says to us, a son, as long as it's a child, is not different from a servant. Though he is food, though he is the master of the house, though he has rights unto the inheritance of everything that exists in that house, but yet he is put under tutor and governorship until the time appointed of the Father. What time does the Father appoint concerning us? We do not know, but that we believe that on earth we know. Let's use human wisdom to guide against what time the Father appoints to make the Son free to have access to his inheritance. That is when man has comes of age. And it's, no, it's mature to know the difference between good and evil. And to design thoughts from events. That is when the master feels that this child is worthy enough to be able to control his father's estate. That is the same thing God is saying here. As long as your wisdom is limited, your knowledge is limited, as long as you remain a baby in the Lord, you will continue to be under tutor and governor. You can never have access to the inheritance that God has promised to the saints. But until you come of age, the time God has appointed, and until you stand up like a man and grow into maturity, and through long suffering, learn the patience that is meant for the saints. At the time, you are no longer babies, be fed with meek, but now you are teachers, skilled in the world, who are matured enough to eat strong meat. That is the time that you will be no longer babes, but this time you will be the master of the house. You have access to all the blessing of the Lord. And that it says in prophecy, until the son of authority know his rights. But when you do not know your rights, though you own everything in the house, you will be like the brother of the prodigal son who will not come into his father's house because his father never gave him a goat and a sheep to celebrate with his friend. Though he own everything in the house, but he did not know that his property of his father were his. And that is who many Christians are. They are believers. They are holy. They are sanctified. The rights of sonship rest on them. But they don't know they are son. They still see themselves as servants. And as a result, they never claim their inheritance. Tonight, we're going to claim our right of inheritance. We're going to say, Father, we desire this, we desire that. 
Because that is my right as a son. The Bible said it is not right to give the children's bread to dogs. The bread is made for children, and the children must eat it tonight. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, you promise us that these sons will follow them that believe. In your name, we will cast that devil. Heal all manner of disease. Take the serpent by the hand. It will not harm us. Tread upon dangerous ground. And nothing shall by any means hurt us. Lord, tonight, we stand in our way of your word. And we hold you by your word. We challenge you concerning what you have spoken. That tonight we would lay our hand upon the sick and they must recover. We will tread upon dangerous ground. It will not harm us. We will take the serpents by the hands and nothing shall by any means hurt us. Because that is our right as a son. Lord, because we believe in God and we know we believe. We don't need anybody to tell us that we believe. We will have confidence in God that we believe in God. And because we have that confidence that we believe, we decree that these signs must follow us tonight. That, O oh Lord, we will lay our hands upon the sick and they must recover. We will cast out devils and we will raise up the dead. And these signs will follow us because we have confidence in you. We know that you have given us authority over and clean spirits to cast them out. And we also know that you promise us that silver and gold are the habitation of your throne. You give anyone that desire of thee. You says no one of us that left his father, his mother, his brother, his sisters, his wife, and children for the sake of the gospel that will by any means lost this reward. Lord, as tonight we left our family, we left our children, we left the comfort of our home for the sake of your word, we will not be unrewarded. I said in this world we will gain double, and in the world to come we will have eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen and Amen. Lastly, we're going to read Daniel chapter 6 to 10. He says, We have not listened to thy servant, the prophet, who spoke in your name to the king and our princes and our ancestors and to the people of the land. Lord, you are righteous, but these days we have covered with shame the people of Judah and of the inhabitants of Jerusalem and all Israel, both nigh and far, and in all the countries where you have scattered us because of our faithfulness. And we and our kings and our princes, our ancestors, Cover with shame, Lord, because we have sinned against thee. Today, the Bible says, The soul that sinned shall die. And one of the most critical sins is the sins of disobedience. And that sins of disobedience has many roots. Today, human race is suffering because of the disobedience of the first man and woman in the garden. God promised us children when we, because he said in his word, there is none barren in the land. That means God did not create any of us to be barren in whatever areas of our life, whether financially, spiritually, or otherwise, even in childbearing. But when we decided to willingly, or our ancestors, 
disobey God willingly. By claiming that children does not come from God, they want to seek it from other means. That becomes an ancestral cause laid on us. So many people are laboring against a covered heaven because of the disobedience of their grandfather, their great grandfather, their great grandmother. But somebody who says, What of the day I became a Christian? I became a new creature. All things are passed away. Yes. But the day you commit sin, you become a slave to sin. And as a result, if you became a Christian, if you remain faithful, those cause has no dominion over you. But if you allow sin back into your life, those ancestral causes, they will come back because whoever commits sin is a slave to sin. And the slave does not have roots in their house, but the son has. And so tonight, the best solution is to get rid of those causes once and for all. That's what we're going to do tonight. We're going to speak to those root ties of those problems, to those ancestral causes. The Bible says in the word of God that the children, that our father ate the right grave, and the mouth of the children we have made sour. But thus says the Lord, not anymore. A sinner being 120 years shall die for his sin. It is he that ate the unripe grape. It is his own mouth that shall be made sour tonight. Thus says the Lord. It is he that quarried the stone that shall be endangered by it. It is he that dig a pit that will fall into it. It is he that quarried the stone that shall be endangered by the ass. The Lord said that no man, not anymore, Will the son pay for the sins of the father? Though he says in Genesis, in the book of Exodus, that I am the Lord visiting the iniquity of the father upon the son unto the fifth, sixth, and seventh generation of them that hate me. But thus says the Lord, not anymore. A sinner being a hundred and twenty years shall die for his sin. The sons will not die for the sins of their father, nor will the children die for the sins of their parents. Therefore, I stand tonight. The Bible says, If the Son of God shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. I stand under the oracles of God tonight and I set these captive sons and daughters of the Lord free, and they shall be free indeed. The Bible says that an unjust cause cannot stick and cause not the costless. The day you become a child of God, you become the costless. Because there is no enchantment against the children of God. There is no divination against them. And the day you become the costless, any man that costs you, the cost can never stick. And therefore, I stand upon the authority of the word of God tonight. And I say, cost not the costless because it will not stick. Because cost was he that hung upon the tree. He was made a cost so that no man on earth, living or dead, can cost you. Therefore, if the Son of God shall make you free, you are free indeed. O oh, you sons and daughters of the Lord, the Lord has set you free. Stand on the liberty where Christ has made you free. Until you understand your rights, the devil will keep threatening you with ancestral causes. Stand on the liberty where Christ has made you free. Do not go back to bondage or captivity so that the devil will not use it as a twenty force to take over your life. Tonight, the Lord has set you free, and you are free indeed. This is where we end today's teaching. Father, answer our prayer. Grant our requests. Lord, as many that send us prayer requests for being sick, we ask healings of the Lord from on their behalf. As many that send prayer requests from being in the captivity of the enemy, we set them loose. As many that send prayer requests of being financially down, Lord, we ask for your supernatural provision upon their life. As many that send prayer requests of broken marriages, Father, we pray that those broken homes be amended tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. 
We call back their husband. We call back their wife. We call back their children. We call back all things that the enemy has stolen from them. And let there be a divine restoration tonight. In the name of God the Father. In the name of God the Son. In the name of God the Holy Spirit. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen.